Welcome back to Logan Random Aquascaping. My name is Logan and today is a really exciting day for me because I just scaped my UNS 60U behind me. I did the hardscape today. In the previous video, I set up all the equipment for this tank. So if you wanna take a look at that, go ahead and check out the previous video in this playlist. So I'm gonna walk you through my step-by-step -step process for how I created this beautiful hardscape using locally collected stone. And if you like what I created here, feel free to recreate it in your own glass and put your own twist on. It. So before we get started, I want to give Boost Plant a big thanks for providing the soil that I'm using in this hardscaping process. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the build. So any great aquascape has to have an extremely strong hardscape and substrate system. It's the backbone and the foundation of your layout. So we're gonna start by laying down a layer of a high quality aqua soil. Today I'm using UNS Contra soil that Boost Plant was kind enough to ship me. If you wanna try this soil out for yourself, go ahead and check the link in my description. I'm laying down a generous layer because I'm about to put a massive stone in here. So I really wanna give that stone some cushion and protect the glass from getting scratched or cracked. Once that soil is in place, I use a paintbrush to sort of manipulate it and move it into the section that I'm going to need some cushion. And next up, it's time to place the mother stone. This is the stone that is really going to draw the viewer's attention. Because this is such a large mother stone, I'm placing a little supporting stone in first that isn't decorative and is purely foundational to support the mother stone and prevent it from falling over and crashing into the glass. So I'm working with locally collected stone. It's a type of basalt that I've collected in Oregon State and I've collected this over the course of a year. Whenever you collect stone, make sure you check your state laws. Be sure not to disturb any nature by prying anything that's deep in the earth and be really respectful and don't take everything from a single place. But I was thrilled when I found this piece and I'd had my eyes on it for a while. It's massive, probably weighs about 20 to 30 pounds. So in order to draw the viewer's eye to this beautiful mother stone, I'm taking advantage of the golden ratio or the rule of thirds, and I'm placing it at the left one third. And humans' eyes are naturally drawn to those intersection points. Once the mother stone was in place, it was time to take a step back and make some adjustments. And I cannot recommend enough setting up your phone or a proper camera at eye level with the tank. And every once in a while, taking a step back and seeing how everything looks compositionally it is amazing, depending on the angle you're looking at your tank with your eyes, how deceiving it can be compared to seeing it with a camera. And if you plan on sharing your tank at all with photographs or videos, I really like to optimize the composition for the camera. So I did that a lot and made little adjustments here and there, angling it, thinking about the lines, thinking about the character of the rock. And once I was happy, it was time to move on to the secondary stone. But I wanted to get some root tabs into the soil. With UNS Contra soil, they're certainly not necessary, but I really want to juice up my soil and see if I get better results. So I did that. I sort of sprinkled the root tabs all over the surface of the soil, knowing that later on I would be covering this with quite a bit more soil. So the secondary stone, like the name implies, is second in command to that massive mother stone. So you don't want it to steal the attention of the mother stone, but you want it to provide visual support. Now you'll see with this stone, the texture doesn't quite work as well as I want it to. It has very large pores, so later on in the build towards the end, I'll swap this out. But placing the stone over here will give me a good idea of the composition and I can build around it and later replace it. So that just goes to show you when you're hardscaping, don't be afraid to remove rocks that you've placed earlier in the build. A lot of times you just need the context of more stones and even the completed layout to see what's gonna work and what's not quite gonna work. And then it was time to add the additional support stones. Now, when you're working with Iwagumis, you could stop at three stones, you could stop at five stones. Let your eyes guide you. You don't want anything to look man-made. And it's a good idea to sort of use the corners of your tank to help you arrange the angles of the stones. When different stones are pointing towards opposite corners, they create interesting tension and sort of take the eye on a journey. It's also a great idea with Iwagumis to try and focus on an odd number of stones. So this is really really important if you're using just a few stones. But the more stones you add, the more you could sort of get away with potential
essentially having an even number of stones. And by the time I was done with my layout, I did have an odd number. I have seven stones in this Iwagumi, and it was just time to add a lot more soil and sort of create a nice slope in the back and support all the stones and really layer soil in so that the rocks look like they're really lived in. So with all of the stones in place, I was really, really happy with what I've created today. I've just been obsessed with Iwagumis this year, and I'm sort of on a journey to try and get better and better at the style. And I think this tank is just gonna really add a nice zen-like element to my studio. I can't wait to plant it, but before we plant, we are going to do the dark start with this aquarium. So if you've ever been curious about the dark start, stay tuned for my next video. I'm gonna break down the theory and the benefits of why we do the dark start, and I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to dark start your next tank. So if you like this type of content and you wanna learn more and follow the journey of the scape, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to my channel. I've got a ton of exciting content coming. And I thank you for watching. I will catch you guys and gals next time. Bye-bye.